Before I begin, I want to take the time to thank Jen, Kat, and Kate for all of their hard work and support. And I would also like to thank everyone who donated and everyone who's in attendance. So shout out to Team Kia. <laughs> and I would like to just take a quick moment of silence for anyone who has lost someone to suicide or is a suicide survivor. Thank you. Imagine you're in the middle of the ocean, but you cannot swim. You're flapping your arms just to stay afloat, just enough to keep your head above water. You never quite drown, but you're in a constant state of panic. Well, that's what having generalized anxiety disorder feels like to me. Now imagine having a ton of bricks on top of your body. You're paralyzed, so you can't push the bricks off. No matter how hard you try to stop, your suicidal thoughts, they scream louder. You're scared to be alone because you fear that you will act on your thoughts. Well, that's what having major depressive disorder feels like to me. When most people look at me, they see a young, vibrant, silly, and ambitious young lady. They see my accomplishments, a bachelor's degree from Howard University, HU, <laughs> and a master's degree from Georgetown University, or maybe a few of the celebrities that I've been blessed to work with within the career of entertainment industry. So when I started talking about major depression and generalized anxiety disorders, I was so surprised and hurt by the responses I received like, you seem so happy and like you have life figured out. Or the time I told a relative that I was hospitalized for depression and anxiety. And she said, oh, I thought you had cancer. My response was no, but I attempted suicide twice. Illnesses such as diabetes and cancer are socially accepted, but my mental illness is not? Why is it that when someone says they battle with the mental illness, such as bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or depression, they are viewed as crazy or as if the mental illness is not real? After I was diagnosed, I felt a lot of emotions. Confusion, frustration, anger, and did not understand if it was real. But most of all, I felt relief because I was glad that I could put a name to what was going on in my mind. I thought depression was just another word for sadness or anxiety meant being worried or scared all the time. I did not understand that it required medical treatment until I was forced into the hospital by the police. My depression and anxiety disorders are not made up in my head. It is very real. Depression is not a character flaw. Mental health professionals state that depression is a chemical imbalance or disruption in the brain. So there are days when I physically feel paralyzed and I cannot move from my bed. I am mentally and physically drained. Some days I can't sleep. Some days I don't shower. Some days I don't eat. And some days I sleep way too much. Depression also forces me to isolate from my family and friends. So can you imagine going without eating, sleeping, showering, feeling paralyzed, unable to think clearly, and having to talk yourself out of harming yourself for days at a time? So it shouldn't be a surprise that when I arrived at the hospital, I was dehydrated and delusional. I had no concept of time, and I did not understand what was happening. Depression and anxiety are not always associated with a life event such as a job loss or a breakup, even though for some it can be. Every day is a struggle, so please do not assume that just because a person is highly educated, rich, or appear happy that they are okay. I'm currently managing my mental illness with medication therapy, my coping skills, and a support group provided by the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Medication is not a cure, 
And it does not mean that I will not have bad days. But it does make it easier for me to cope. I have an amazing therapist. Shout out to Dr. Tucker. <laughs> and I have been seeing her for two years. I can honestly say that my therapist has been my rock. And of course, the support of my amazing family and friends. I have no idea where I would be without them. That's why organizations such as This Is My Brave is extremely important because it helps to end the stigma of why mental health matters. By sharing the stories of those who are impacted by mental illness, This Is My Brave is normalizing the conversation, which will encourage people to seek treatment. It is therapeutic for me to tell my story because I am controlling my illness and it is no longer controlling me. By not talking about it, it forces people to suffer in silence and there's no healing in silence. That's why when I'm struggling with my suicidal thoughts, I tell my therapist and the people on my support, support system, yes, it's scary and it's very uncomfortable, but it's when I need them the most. Many times I'll say things like, no, I don't need you to come over. No, you don't have to call me. But on the inside, I'm screaming, help me, please. Because I don't want, but I don't want, also don't want to feel like a burden. It does not mean that I want to express my emotions if you come around or my thoughts, but just your presence is good enough to get me through. So when your child, friend, or sister come to you and say they are depressed or hurting emotionally, please do not dismiss them because you could be the one to save their life. Thank you. <laughs>